Hello and welcome to our We Choose to Thrive Boot Camp video series. My name is Kaylin Ravenzi. And my, I am Becky Norwood. And we are the founders of Women Up International, a platform for abuse survivors and thrivers to continue to find help and healing wherever they are along their healing journey. So today's video is about admitting that we as women, we are not at fault for what happened to us. So Becky, why is it that we feel that we were at fault for the abuse that was given to us? I feel like there's a couple of reasons. And for many of us, if we were children when abuse started, typically we're told that this is, it's our fault. Mm -hmm. Typically we're told many things like we're ugly, we're stupid, we'll never amount to anything, we deserve it. And, and we also have oftentimes even, even the warning that, that this is something that you know, if we tell, we're, there will be repercussions. Yeah. And so we go on with our life thinking that it is our fault. It just wears on us. But the other part of it, if, if you didn't have abuse as a child but maybe got into domestic violence um, as an adult, sometimes when we are faced with abuse, it's really sad and scary. But one of the things that happens is many times maybe we don't react in a way that Maybe we say things that are not kind, and maybe we react with a, a because of the abuse, we react in fear, yeah. and we, we maybe say things and do things that we would not normally have done. And so that puts, that puts such a, a fear and a guilt and a shame that's on us. So we don't, we don't make the progress because we want to hide it because we're ashamed that, that this actually happened to us. Absolutely, and I, and I would also say that chances are we're also told if this was to happen to us, if domestic violence, that if you say anything, you're going to be hurt even more, you yes. know, so, yes. so then you have to hide that out as well, and so now you still can't say anything regardless of the age you're at because of all that's going to be, because it, and it could also be peril to your life. Well, that was the story of my life, you know, yeah. that, that um, not only when I was a child, it was that that we would be, everybody in the family would be killed. And as I became an adult and had a family of my own, it was always that warning, I'll take, your, I'll, I'll take care of your children too, you know. I will kill your children, you, you know, so I, wherever you go, I will find you, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so what do you do with a situation like that? And, Absolutely. And when you're told that it's your fault, yeah. why would you speak, you know? It, why, why wouldn't you believe it? Yeah. Literally, why wouldn't you believe it? Correct. Right? Absolutely. Thank you. So now, you know, how do we come to grips with the fact that we can know in our hearts that it's not our fault for what this happened, happens to us, despite all of the things that, you know, our abuser tried to manipulate us with or deceive us with? How do we come to that knowing that it's not our fault? You know, I think at our core, we're really good. And there's that, always that little voice inside that tells us that we're better than this. And I feel like that for myself. But it finally comes down to the point where you just get so weary of holding that in. And you, you know, for me, people would be in, I could be in a group and everybody's laughing and having fun and I couldn't find anything funny in it. You know, I couldn't laugh. I couldn't just relax and enjoy myself. And there's that part of you that says, I just want to be happy. I just want to enjoy life. And so, so, you know, here we are. You know, you finally come to a point where you say, enough is enough. Yeah, you know? really do. You know what's really cool, though? You hit on something that is so beautiful. And what that is is every single human being is equipped comes automatically equipped at birth with that voice, with that inner knowing that we deserve so much better in life. Always. Always. Right? And Always. so even though, as you describe at times, that, that heavy, wet blankets that are just piled on top of you, there's that voice that says, I deserve to be free. I deserve to be able to live my life the way that I want to it's without this pain. Something really deep in our core that, that yes. you know, just, it speaks. Now, we don't always know what to do about it. We don't always listen. We don't always know the way out. But something always speaks down in the deep 
quiet recesses of our hearts. Yes. Oh, that's so beautiful. I just absolutely <laughs> love that. So, you know, what it comes really down to is what are the real facts of the situation when broken down into reality about the, um, our, our abuse and thinking that it was our fault. What are the real facts about this? The real facts is nobody deserves to be abused. Thank you very much. Nobody. Absolutely. And, and the perpetrators, perhaps they were abused in their lifetime, but the real fact is they can choose to break the cycle. Thank you. You know, they can mm -hmm. choose to do that. And if they don't choose, oh my goodness, we can choose. We can choose to break the cycle because so many generations, many times abuse is generational in families. It goes mm -hmm. on and on and on because we per perpetuate it. Yeah. And one of the things that my abuser, who was my father, said to me not long before he took his life was, you've broken the cycle of abuse in this family. Now, I know that had to have been difficult for him to say because he knew, but he was miserable. He was miserable because I was growing and changing and I was making some big changes in my life. Even though I never spoke up for many years afterwards, mm -hmm. I still was making changes and he recognized that. Mm -hmm. And I never raised my children the way I was raised. Right. You know? You know, in fact, you must be reading my mind. I know how you are because I was going to ask you if you would share the, that very comment that he said. And that, that is a huge admitting for the perpetrator to come out and say to that, that individual that he's abused for their entire existence, you have broken the abuse cycle in our family. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. That is, that's so beautiful. I'm so grateful that you shared that with us. So how does this knowing inside of us that we are not fault for our abuse help in our healing journey? You know, it's sometimes a difficult place to get. Yeah. Um, but as we, as we start doing the inner work, as we start recognizing the fact that this is not the way out. I don't want this stuff to color my world any longer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As we start doing that inner work and open ourselves up to the possibility that there is something much more out there, then that's when the beauty starts and that sort of recognition that, you know, it isn't our fault. I didn't ask for that. Yeah. You know, I didn't deserve it by no means. Nobody deserves it. Yeah. And, and so we start with maybe teeny tiny baby steps yeah. to, to start that journey of recognizing our self-worth mm -hmm. and our beauty and all the other things that make us who we are. And as you, as you start to rise above it and you catch those glimmers of joy, yeah. and when you start looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, wow, I'm quite okay. You know, yeah. I'm beautiful. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't happen overnight, but it's a process and it's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice, a choice we make. Yeah. yeah. And that's what the name of the series is. We choose to thrive Absolutely. because um, one of the beautiful things for me is I had no idea in the world that there were so many other women that had faced these kind of things. Never. Because I kept it so quiet. And I kept, it was like I had a wall all around me. It was my wall of protection. Mm -hmm. But where did they get me? Where did, how did that serve me? And once I started gaining the courage to speak up and to start telling my truth, this has been amazing for me to, to realize what the horrible statistics are and realize I was never alone and there is help out there. And, and now as we come together to, to provide that encouragement to say, hey, if you're, you know, if you're encountering this and you're, you're choosing to thrive, you have a sisterhood that is locking arms. We have, we're locking arms. We're standing arm in arm and holding each other's hand to lift each other up and say, we can do this. Because what is the saying? Um, oh, you know the saying? And it just left my mind <laughs> about everything you can do better with more people. What is that, that saying? I can't even remember, but you know what I'm talking about, right? I do, but I don't come up with it right now. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, as you talk here, I think about, about my healing journey as well. And I think about 
you know, my abuse was from the ages of five till eight years old, and it was by um, an extended family member that was older than me, and I, I didn't know. When you're a child, you have no idea what's going on, and then when it stops, you're like, what, what's happening here? And so you go on, and you're literally thinking, something's wrong with me. Um, I'm, I'm too weird. Um, I, I, I must have some kind of deflection that says, look out, she's crazy, you know, or something of that nature that, that people just have this aversion to that we think is a real thing. When in actuality, mm. it's not, you know, and is that self-perception? Yeah, it is their self-perception, um, but if, but we vibrate at, a, at whatever that frequency is. Um, and, you know, on as we cover in our course later, on the scale of the, the vibrational frequencies, shame and guilt are among the lowest. And if we're at shame and guilt in and that's what we're vibrating out. Yeah. Then that's it's what, not a very big vibration, but it's pretty nasty. Well, it's nasty in the sense of that's what is felt, either consciously or unconsciously, no matter what, yeah. by those around us. And 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 so sometimes I used to say, I think I had sucker written on my forehead. Sure. You know, attract all the weird people in your life. Because you know, as a child, when a child grows up in an environment like this. Yeah. When we become adults, what do we attract? We attract that which we know. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, Unless we choose to change, and then we attract something better. Until we choose to change. Absolutely. Because many times we don't know what we need to do. Yeah. You know, we just know that, well, that's familiar. And that's, I, you know, we for if you've had it, extensively as a child it seems that your frame of reference knows yeah. no differently your inner voice is saying there's something different there's something better but we haven't come to the point yet many times and that's there's something that that you've listened to you've yeah. learned to listen to that's helped you rise above it but you know typically when you've had only that to, as a frame of reference it takes many years before you're really ready to say I'm ready to attract something far better than this yeah you know? absolutely beautiful beautiful well we want to uh, thank thank our viewers for being able to be here with us at this time today um, and really understanding that you know it really it's not our fault that these things happen and when we come to grips with this and understand this we literally have this ability as we choose to thrive to overcome and to become so much more and so much more for ourselves and for our families our children our communities and for the world ultimately so our next video we're going to take a look into the conscious choices we make to go beyond the suffering and shed that victim mentality. So thank you for joining us here at Women Up International, where women choose to vibrantly thrive. We and choose to thrive. <laughs> <laughs> we choose to vibrantly thrive. That is right. So beautiful. Thank you for joining us today.